Pluto used to be considered a major planet, but later was reclassified into something called a dwarf planet. Something too big to be an asteroid, but too small to be taken seriously. How rude. But recently scientists began to discuss the mystery surrounding one of Pluto's moons. It turns out, it might be even cooler than all of us. It might be a double planet system. Pluto is residing in the distant Kuiper Belt. It's a vast area in our solar system, like a big rocky suburb beyond the orbit of Neptune. It's filled with small icy objects, similar to Pluto, called Kuiper objects. They're leftovers from the early days of our solar system and give us clues about how it was formed. It's where many comets come from. You already know that it's small, but it's remarkable just how small it is. Pluto has a width of about 1, 400 miles. It's about half the size of the United States and smaller than our moon. Pluto's atmosphere is very thin and composed of nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide. Stinky. It's also very cold there, with average temperatures being around minus 390 degrees Fahrenheit. Its orbit around the sun looks like an oval, and one year on Pluto takes around 250 Earth years. Pluto also shows a strange and unusual retrograde rotation because it's tilted on its axis, which means that it spins on its side. If you were standing on Pluto, you'd see a lot of high, icy mountains, valleys, plains, and craters. The sun would be very dim and far away, and it would always look like twilight. It's a colorful planet, surprisingly you would see a rainbow of pale blues, yellows, oranges, and deep reds. And the most adorable fact about Pluto is its famous heart called Tumbal Regio. Pluto was discovered super late in the 1930s, later than the rest of the planets. Initially, we thought that it's the ninth planet in our solar system. However, the more we explored the Kuiper Belt, the more we realize that it's full of these medium-sized objects. We found four more little planets just like Pluto, Eris, Ceres, Make Make, and Haumea. They all shared the same characteristics. And that's where we figured out that Pluto belongs to another family and created a category of dwarfs. There are a couple of differences between these two categories. The first obvious difference is size and mass. Major planets are much bigger and more massive. They also have to be spherical. While dwarf planets might not be perfect spheres and might have weird shapes, like an egg-shaped Haumea, for example. And just like a regular planet, a dwarf planet orbits the sun, but it doesn't have a clear orbit. Its orbit is full of debris, and random objects. These are the only differences between the two. Well, as you can imagine, the reclassification sparked quite a controversy. People even made up a new term, Pluto, which means downgraded. But although it might be sad that Pluto isn't a major planet anymore, we can look at it like a story about finding your true family. And finally, while standing on Pluto, you would see its five moons. Styx, Nix, Kerberos, Hydra, and the most mysterious one, Chiron. Also pronounced Sharon. So you can pronounce it however you like. I'm gonna go with Sharon. Now Sharon, hey, is Pluto's largest moon. It was discovered in the 70s thanks to NASA's spacecraft called New Horizons. The spacecraft took a picture that revealed a moon with a strange and fascinating huge red-brown spot on its surface. It's a vast canyon dwarfing the Grand Canyon. It seems that both Pluto and its moon can boast interesting formations on their surface. The thing about Charon is that it's very big for a moon. It's about half the size of Pluto. This makes scientists wonder. Could it be that Pluto is a double planet system? The center of mass, or barycenter, 
of Pluto and Charon lie outside of Pluto. Normally with planets and their moons, the center of the planet itself should be the center of the mass, with the moon orbiting around it. But in the case of these two, it seems like they orbit each other. Binary objects are quite common in the universe. These cosmic pairs form just like our moon from giant impact events. But double planets are exceedingly rare. And we haven't discovered any double dwarf planets yet. So if it's true, then Charon is actually the sixth dwarf planet. And that would be our first binary dwarf planet system ever. There's also another candidate, the dwarf planet Eris and its moon, Isnomia. The solar system is full of mysterious and fascinating moons, so fascinating that some of them might not even have actual life on them. We've been talking about microscopic life in space for a while now. The debates about whether we found some organic fossils on Mars or not have been going on for decades. With the development of our technology, we're finally getting onto something. Transcribed meet Enceladus, who has stolen the spotlight since NASA's Cassini probe arrived there. Enceladus is covered in a sort of snowy blanket, which is why it's so unusually bright and has some snow-covered craters. It's small, only about 310 miles, and is mostly composed of simple rock and ice. But in 2004, we found plumes of water bursting out from this moon's south pole, which means that there's liquid water beneath this moon's icy surface. It's probably because of Saturn and its other larger moon, Dion. Their gravitational dance creates tidal forces that keeps Enceladus warm and lively. All this means that Enceladus is now a top candidate in the search for life within our solar system. Of course, life requires more than just water, and we won't find any animals there or anything like that. But we might find some microscopic organisms, and that's awesome too. In fact, Saturn is winning the lottery when it comes to life candidates. For example, scientists have a wild idea that Titan, another of its moons, might be home to extraterrestrial life as well. Titan is a frosty moon, chilling at about minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit. Surprisingly, it has some lakes on its surface. But don't imagine your typical water bodies. These lakes are believed to be filled, not with water, but with liquid ethane or methane. Back in 2005, NASA discussed that there might be life munching on chemicals, like acetylene or hydrogen, in Titan's lakes. And then, in 2010, NASA investigated this moon some more. They found missing hydrogen and acetylene on Titan's surface, hinting at the possibility of something eating away at these substances. That's why some scientists dared to imagine methane-eating beings in Titan's freezing lakes. Moreover, they suggested that, if these creatures exist, they probably have much larger cells than animals on Earth. What we could find there is something much bigger than a simple microbe, even something like a small animal. But Saturn isn't the only lucky one. Triton is too. It's Neptune's biggest moon. And you guessed it, it's another life candidate. It's an icy world with frozen nitrogen all over its surface and a crust made of water ice. Again, super chilly. However, Triton is a hotspot for geologists because it's one of just five moons in our solar system that likes to show off with its active geysers. It's shooting nitrogen gas up into space. That would be a cool show if we could see that. These geysers mean that Triton has some secret source of warmth. Which means that, just like with Enceladus, there might be some liquid water underground on Triton. And if this cozy spot for life does exist, we might find some organics there. Unfortunately, sending a mission to explore these celestial bodies isn't easy. 
The only spacecraft we've sent so far was our Voyager 2 in 1989. We need more time, money, and technology to develop spacecrafts that would be able to travel far and investigate the area beyond Mars. And even if we do, it'll take decades for this spacecraft to reach these places. Let's hope that, during the 21st century, we'll finally be able to fully explore our solar system and all its mysteries. Please like and share so everyone knows. Thank you for watching. If you want to know more, stay with Hidden to continue.